Hello there friends, welcome back to my channel. This is the second episode of the Tube Morphology series on the permanent incisors. In the last episode we looked at the pre milo so if you haven't watched that, please go and watch that. I did give a lecture on this earlier on, on Tuesday this week with my friend Hibber, which I think went really well. A lot of people came, so I was, we, were, we were chuffed about that. Um, these are the easiest teeth to, actually I said that about the last video, and oh, now that I've gone over this, I've just finished making this poster. Um, and I thought I'd run through it with you because it's still sort of fresh in my mind. Now that I've got it all on one page, it's made me realise, okay, maybe this is e these are probably even easier than the free molars. So these are the most prominent teeth in the mouth. Um, I'm quite a good case. I've, mine are particularly prominent. Okay, I've got 13% battery, so I better get on move on with this. Uh, <laughs> so let's get straight on into the video and we'll start with the upper central incisor. So the upper central, we have a large labial surface, really well known, for, you know, everybody knows this. Spade-like and flattened surface. It has a 90 degree angle corner, mesial corner, and a more curved distal corner. So that's what you can look at to distinguish between left and right. Um, so if, it's distal, if the distal corner is curved, then you know it's next to the lateral incisor. It's a bit curved at the top around the cervical margin, a bit of terminology there for you, which is just where the crown meets the gum or the root. As for the roots, these are single rooted, fat stubby roots that hold it into the jaw. As for the lingual side, we've got a large swelling, which is a cingulum, followed by, by a small concave area, which is the scoop. That's not necessarily a technical terminology, that's just what I've written. And it's what our lecturer referred to it as, which is then bounded by two marginal ridges. The marginal ridges then run into the rounded area of cingulum. Oh, sorry, rounded area of enamel, which is the cingulum. And then just quickly the proximal view, it's triangular or wedge shaped. And that's the upper central incisor done. So now we can move on to the lateral. The upper lateral, okay. Uh, the characteristics are very, very similar. Like this is pretty much an identical tooth, except for one major thing, which I will point out. It's flattened and spade-like on its uh, labial surface has the 90 degree corner showing the mesial side and a more curved corner which indicates the distal side. Slight differences are that it is smaller than the central. The biggest difference is that it has a cingulum pit um, which I'll come on to and then the third difference is that the root is slightly longer and more spindly. So the palatal view and we have the cingulum again followed by the scoop and in between we have a little cingulum pit which I think can be used for various dental treatments actually so it is significant clinically too although what what exactly I'm, I'm I can't recall I'm sure I'll learn that later on in the course or someone in the comments if you know what the cingulum pit is used for in clinical practice please let me know that's supposed to be typing Last thing to note roots tend to bend distally uh, this is actually true for the upper central and all the teeth really. It's not always the case but it's something to bear in mind, it's very very common that the roots bend distally. That's the upper incisors done, so we can move on to the lowers. The lower central incisors, so both sides, both corners, sorry, are 90 degrees, so we can't use the 90 degree one side and more curved um, you know, distal side for this tooth. We, we, we can't use that to distinguish between left and right, you have to look at the root for this. But for the purpose of our exams, we're not going to be tested on deciding between which are lower lateral and which are lower central. So just, this is more for anyone who's watching the video that maybe wants to learn a bit more detail. So you, you look at the root, as I said, you have to feel the side of it. If there is a more grooved side and a more rounded side, the more grooved side is distal and the more rounded is mesial. And that's true for the lower lateral incisor as well. These roots are generally more flattened and if we view this, the tooth lingually, we can see a much smaller cingulum than what we see in the uppers. And again, it has the scoop area. But there's more obvious ways to distinguish the lower incisors from the uppers. And that's just looking at the shape of it. You don't have this large labial surface and spade-like shape anymore. Instead, the lower incisors are chisel shaped. Uh, they're a lot smaller, narrower, and longer than the uppers. The length of the crown actually exceeds the length of the root. As I've already mentioned, flattened lingual surface that flows from the scoop to the tiny cingulum, and there's very little cingulum. And that's the lower central completed, discussed uh, to its entirety, well, as far as I'm concerned. Then onto the lower lateral incisor. 
Lower lateral, okay. So this one is slightly more fan shaped than chisel, oh, it's still chisel shaped, but it's slightly more kind of white. It's slightly wider than the central. Very little cingulum again, one flattened root. Again, it shares, as I already mentioned this, it shares the features where the mesial side is more rounded and the distal side is more grooved. That's of the root. But if that's not enough for you, there's another way you can tell the lower incisors apart, and that's by viewing these teeth incisely. So you'll notice that the central incisors are pretty much straight. Uh, whereas the lower lateral are kind of twist, the crown is twisted on the root and that's just so it can turn the corner of the arch, so to speak. And that's, that's my final point, that's my final observation of the permanent incisors. There are way more details you can learn about. These are just the minimum details that we're kind of required to learn or um, encouraged to learn for our tooth identification test which is coming up soon on the 6th of February and so if you're in my year that's the date to start sweating for <laughs> hopefully I've covered everything on the permanent incisors they're quite straightforward I think this is the quickest video I'm going to be able to chuck out at you guys so I hope you like it and it's helpful as always if you have any comments any observations about the way I'm presenting and it could be improved please let me know because I'm trying to work on this video editing and talking to the camera etc. Maybe if I'm talking too quickly, I, I feel like that might be a problem but so far people have been very kind and said it's it's been alright. So let's leave it there then, uh, thanks so much for watching. Oh one more thing, the 10 sub special is out so if you're one of my uh, first 10 subscribers and the new people, welcome, welcome to the family, to the dental family. I interviewed a couple of my mates to ask how they were finding university life and if they had any tips for the, the newbies that are coming in September. And yeah, it was just a bit fun to make. So please go and watch that and I'll see you guys in the next video.